Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you watch my channel at all, you'll know that I cover sound cards and that's exactly what we have for you today. So this one, as you can tell, is a very chonky boy. And if you look closer at it, you can see why, because this card was made by the ancient Aztecs, as you can see from this chip right here. Now, if you're really paying attention, you'll notice that there's more going on with this thing than just being a sound card. As you can see right here, there is some modemy bits on the sound card, thus making it a sound card with modemy bits. Now, there's a few cards like this back in the day that combined a modem and a sound card, and they weren't exactly liked by everyone simply because they just had a lot of problems and a lot of conflicts when trying to get the modem and the sound card to work. What I'm hoping is, is that since I don't really give a rip about the modem part, that I'll just be able to get the sound card part to work and it should be a pretty good time. And I expect it to sound pretty decent too because there's a real Yamaha OPL3 chip on here and an analog devices AD1845JP for the digital sound. So with all this intro stuff out of the way, let's put this thing into my slot one rig and see what the hubbub is all about. But first let's have a word from our sponsor of this video today, which is bleep, bleep, wee, 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 I am a USDA certified organic robot. Wee, 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 I am here to tell you about PCBWay.com, a fine website where you can order circuit boards like the ones that run my advanced robot guts. They have a broad selection of customization options to fit any project you can dream up, and they do far more than just PCBs. They also specialize in 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. It doesn't matter if you're just a hobbyist or a mad scientist, if you want to do an electronics project PCB Way has you covered. Check the link below for more information. Now back to your regularly scheduled human. So just so you guys know, I went into this install completely blind without knowing really what to expect. So just keep that in mind when you're judging me. So if I didn't mention it before, this card uses the Aztec 2316R chipset. And this chip seems to have been used on a lot of Aztecs cards from this time period, including the Sound Washington 16, the Multimedia Pro 16, and the Wave Rider. And from what I can tell, these chips were used an awful lot in Packard Bell systems from the early to mid 90s. So the card we're looking at here is likely an OEM Packard Bell model. And do you remember at the beginning of the video when I said that there could be possible conflicts with this card with the modem and the sound card? Well, we weren't disappointed as you can see. Thankfully, this was easy enough to fix just by disabling the serial ports, which honestly I don't really use on this system anyway. So if you take a look at the card real quick physically, just looking it over, you'll notice that there's no jumpers on it, meaning that this is a plug and play card. Now you might be thinking, oh, plug and play, you know, like today, that means you just, you just plug in your USB drive and hey, it works. Well, unfortunately, that's not really the case with these old cards. It's more of just like, you hope it does that. Now the hardware for this card is configured using a utility that runs inside of DOS. From here, you can select the settings that you want your card to use, and you can also turn off the modem, which I definitely did. After you save the settings, the utility will also write to your autoexec files and set up everything for you. Now on the Windows side, all I really had to do was install the included driver and make sure all the settings matched what I set in the DOS utility. And just like that, no conflicts, at least as far as I know. See, I did have some issues getting the digital sound to work in Doom, Duke Nukem 3D and Tyrion for some reason. Now there is a DOS utility that comes with the card that tests the 16-bit sound for DOS and I can't get that to work at all. And maybe I'm just doing something horribly, horribly wrong, but I don't know. I tried Windows 98, then I installed Windows 95 and that didn't work any better. So I installed Windows 98 again and the same problems persisted with all of them. So if you guys have any ideas on what I can do to fix this, uh, let me know in the comments maybe. But with all this out of the way, let's hear what it actually sounds like in Sound Blaster Pro mode in a few DOS games.
So I think we can all agree that it sounds pretty good when it works. It pretty much just sounds like a Sound Blaster Pro, which is awesome. And this is a considerably cheaper option than a real Sound Blaster 16 or something, coming in at a mere $20 or so. However, with great cheapness comes great annoyability, and I think this card definitely kind of has that in terms of configuration. However, if you can overlook that, I think it's a great sounding card at a good price if you're willing to consider its limitations. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like and subscribe button, and maybe check out some of my other videos I have here on YouTube about sound cards.